Well, here we go with another video of a 1950s tin toy car. I think it's Chinese. I couldn't find it anywhere online. And later you'll see that it has like a, a, a little flag holder next to the driver's side door. And I looked and looked and looked on 1950s, 1940s, 50s, and 60s police cars, and there was absolutely nothing. And it was pretty dirty, a little bit rusty, and someone had banged it with a hammer, or, or maybe even worse. So it was in pretty, it was intact, but in pretty bad shape. And my first step was to clean it off a little bit. And then let you see it here in the sun. So the, the roof is kind of caved in. The trunk or the boot is being smashed up. Some other odds and ends were broken. The back wheels, you can see they sink into the body of the car. It wasn't attached. So it had been probably, probably banged on its wheels. As one will do when they play with a car. You can see there the the front grille is quite rusty, and so that's going to all have to go into the rust remover. And tabs. I messed with tabs, and you would think pulling these tabs back you would do it once, but you don't. You keep messing with them. That little box there is a little sound maker that's inside many of these cars. It's just a little cardboard or paper box with a, with a little metal tab on it and um, that tab is inserted in the gears and it makes in this case it makes a little police car sound and uh, I was able to fix that the bottom part the the little mechanism there was everything was pretty much intact looked it looked pretty good and here I am again with the tabs and bending the tabs and straightening them and here taking you know the tabs that you need to get the the bumpers off and the and the windshield and the back window and the top of the car all these little tabs have to be bent and bent again and worked a little bit and jollied along because they don't always cooperate from the beginning, but it's not hard work. It's kind of fun. And there you can see how smashed in that roof is. And quite some dents inside, like under the roof, um, there were even in quite some dents as well. Just trying to be very careful with these very thin, like here the windshield, um, very, very thin. And at one time covered in a nice chrome. Here they are in the bucket getting ready to go for the paint removal. And here the paint has been removed. And I'm taking some probably triple aught, maybe quadruple aught steel wool and getting kind of shining it up a little bit all right go with those tabs again it's just a never-ending process and getting bits and pieces of paint off that that wasn't they weren't removed Again, you see the, the dents in the top. And here I will just use this anvil and, um, and a little hammer to start knocking them out. And I, I didn't get it completely flat, but I'll put in some polyester filler and, you know, the, the, the very, the very light 
dents that you know I couldn't really get out. I didn't have the right hammer. I do in the meantime. I do. I've got a ball peen hammer, which works much better on these things. But this worked okay, and the dents are coming out. And with that polyester filler, then I'm able to give a pretty good, pretty good surface, pretty flat surface. A little bit of work on the body. Not too much. And you can see there that filler on the on the front and the back. It's all pretty pretty cleaned up and now it's gotta be all sanded down and sanded flat. Using a pretty high grit sandpaper there. And then I just use a rattle can to I uh, see a lot of these guys online and they're mixing paint and they're giving just the right, you know, <laughs> just the right kind of paint on there and it looks beautiful and I just can't be bothered. So this is, you know, stuff that you would buy from your hardware store. Here I'm reinstalling the, the mechanism that makes it go. Uh, and also, uh, it's where we get the, the noise from cleaning up the wheels a little bit, so a little bit of paint removers. Uh, I think it was paint remover. Got on there. It's a really handy thing there that uh, that brush, that that uh, brass brush. I'm gonna start to see how it'll come together. And there's the liquid chrome. Important that you do this in good light. This looks like pretty good light here. I should have done a little bit better job than I did, but I had to. I had to go back and and uh, and uh, pretty it up a bit because I saw that I'd missed quite a few quite a few areas. So getting this stuff properly shaken up and then keeping it flowing and nicely and evenly flowing. Um, is, is important. And like I said, later I came back and saw that after it had dried, I, I had missed quite a few, quite a few spots. But it makes all the difference. It really looks good. There's a little flag holder. Still not sure why I put that on there, but and here's the little sound maker. I've repaired it on the top. It wasn't working and it got torn there on the top. So I had to glue that down and uh, get it really better fixed onto the chassis. And once I did that, um, it made a great little police car sound. And here I am mixing some epoxy glue to put on the back of the of the light on top just to hold it in. It was initially held in by some some plastic that was sort of spread out and I had to take that off uh, to get it right, but it glues back on nicely. So here's the, there's a little sound at this speed. It doesn't quite sound like a police car, but here we are putting all the bits and pieces back on and here we go again with the tabs.
and it just takes a genius I think to design these things um, I complain about the tabs but whoever came up with this and put it together and uh, designed these this thing it's a really really elegant design here I'm holding um, some of these things with uh, with those uh, clamps those are operation like a surgical clamps those are really so handy here I am again with the, the epoxy glue and I'm putting on hubcaps and I think that'll really add to the look uh, it's also period correct and these little hubcaps are just from the hardware store and uh, you know those little caps that you can put on bolts or screws to make them prettier well I just got some for this these are about uh, I think they're about, about a centimeter across maybe slightly less and you have to put down all the tabs and clean up some of the chrome now it looks like it's ready to go we're going to get these uh, decals from Alex at my custom Hot Wheels he's also got a YouTube channel and it was basically the only place I could find nice little uh, police decals for this thing. And to my shame, I got it all cleaned and I did all the right stuff. And I'm going to clip them out and, and put them down. I've got my micro sole there and all the right kind of decal stuff. But you can't put these decals on black. It just does not work and so i left a bit of my shame here so i'm going to fiddle around with this for the next 30 seconds or so. well it was much much longer than that but for the next 30 seconds of this video i'm going to mess around with that and um i put these this decal on here and it you couldn't see it luckily i was able to take it off put it back on the little piece of paper and I saved it and used it again, which is probably impossible, but I did it. And uh, it stuck pretty well. And then I put a couple coats of clear lacquer on there. And uh, as far as I know, it's stuck forever. So that didn't work. So I put made white doors. Which is a nuisance, but it kind of it kind of looks nice, and it's going to allow the decals to pop out nicely. And so I chose for some California Highway Patrol decals, and uh, those went on there very nice. You can already see here. Um, that they are quite visible they look nice so thanks to Alex for uh, for that and just one of the highway patrols uh, decals on the top so I just have it on each door and on top and uh, it's it's a nice it's a nice little car <laughs> 